Hello and uh, welcome to von Neumann Algebra. That's the topic of the presentation today. Extremely important, so these algebras are somehow the, the core of the whole mathematics. So let's find this, uh, this presentation. We're getting now into serious things. So uh, it's going to be a bit philosophical because this, uh, this area is so old and so developed and uh, developed in an interesting way. So everything is interesting, so there will be no proof today and uh, just a short presentation. In the next two lectures, we'll go more into details. So, uh, well, the phenomenal algebras are the algebras of operators which are closed under the weak topology, meaning uh, pointwise convergence. As examples, of course, uh, these are the same as sister algebras in finite dimensions, there's no topology there. And also importantly, L, L of infinity of x uh, acting by multiplication on L2 of x for any measure space x. And actually, the commutative for Neumann algebras are exactly this and infinity of x's. So we can see now the difference between sister algebras and von Neumann, sister are C of x. In the commutative case, von Neumann are L infinity of x. It's two different things. Now, what the theory says, uh, the basic theory, so first of all is the discovery by, by John von Neumann that uh, the condition of being weakly closed is the same as being equal to the B commutants. So what do we mean by this? You can take the, the commutants inside B of H, right? Everything lives, lives inside B of H. And the commutant of the commutant is a priori bigger than A. A is included in double uh, commutant of A. If this is an equality, it means exactly that uh, A must be weakly closed. So as an interesting consequence, since commutants are equal to their double commutants, uh, the phenomenon algebras alternatively, uh, they just appear as, as commutants. This is very important in relation with, the, with physics, with, where many things appear as commutants. Now, a few more comments about the relation between star and phenomenon. So of course, phenomenon implies star. And uh, conversely, so we can locate inside star algebras, the phenomenon algebras. These are those uh, having pre uh, separable pred wall, so it's a bit complicated. Also, as another remark, L infinity of x, of course, is a commutative sister algebra, so you can apply Gelfand, right? So it's going to be C of uh, x hat, x hat being some kind of compactification, and that's true, that's the strong change compactification. So see, there's some, uh, some subtle functional analysis in all this. Now, what can we say? Well, in finite dimensions, so these are the same as sister algebra, so that's a joint result for von Neumann and sister algebra theory. Or put it here because these ideas that we're using are more von Neumann ish somehow. So, uh, in finite dimensions, these are exactly the direct sum of matrix algebras. So, as this true, you write one as a sum of minimal projections, and then each minimal projection returns a block somehow. That's the idea, it's very, very elementary. Now, uh, somehow uh, along the same lines, but um, a thousand times more complicated, is the reduction theory of John von Neumann. So this is the following thing. So given an ar arbitrary von Neumann algebra, let's look at the center, which is commutative. So that must be an infinity of x, right, with x measured space. This is very powerful because what von Neumann found is that the whole algebra decomposes as integral of factors. Factors meaning the, the von Neumann algebra that you get there, which must, must have trivial center, right? Because you will kill the center. Uh, this is very complicated, I mean, not uh, very technical. But as an example, in finite dimensions, well, exactly, it's exactly what we're talking about. So this is the integral, it's a sum in this case, and these are all factors. So all this is just to look at factors. And uh, factors now, there's a long story here, they fall into three classes, so type one, these are M of C or uh, in the limit B of H itself. And then type two, there's an interesting case, which are the factors having a trace, type two one, or maybe the type two one tensor B of H, these are called type two infinity. And then type three, uh, which only several classes, it's a bit complicated, but uh, Kwon proved based on ideas of Tomita Takisaki and others, that they can be recovered from the two one factors via kind of cross product constructions. So this classification is very heavy. I mean, it's Murray von Neumann and then quite a lot of work. And the conclusion is somehow that the two factors are the building blocks of the series. So these are the factors to be studied. So now let's go into these factors. So a uh, definition, yeah, for, uh, so it's a von Neumann algebra, trivial center, infinite dimensional, I mean, not for avoiding matrix algebra, 
algebras, and the important axiom is that uh, there is a trace. One can prove that this trace is actually unique. And as a first interesting thing discovered by Marian von Neumann, the trace of the projections inside, so the trace is normalized as to have trace of one is one, a priori, uh, so it can range between zero and one, a priori, you would say that these are rational numbers, right? Because the trace of the projection is about the risk scale dimension of the range. Well, what they discover is that uh, for any two one factor, the traces of projections can be taken any value between zero and one. It's a kind of continuous dimension thing. It's very interesting. So, finally, one more thing. The, among all these two one factors, there is somehow a smallest one, which is unique. It's called the hyperfinite factor R of Marian von Neumann. So, the idea is that no matter how you take inductive limits of matrix algebras, no matter how, how the um, uh, the limit is made, you always obtain, when, when closing, of course, weekly, uh, to one factor, which is called R. And this is somehow the unique hyperfinite one factor. Hyperfinite means somehow the smallest one. And even more generally, the whole theory of hyperfinite form and algebras reduces via cross product construction and things like that to the theory of R. So this is very heavy. I mean, it's basically Cohen and then Hagia group. So uh, it's all about R. Finally, and that's their algebra to be studied. And it's very close of I mean, many of you doing algebras. Sometimes you think, what well, algebra should I study? What should I do with it? Well, that's your algebra. And now I'll tell you what to do with it. So uh, you can do many things. So uh, last time we talked a bit about non commutative geometry. Well, you, you can do it here. So even a group, you can you have a von Neumann algebra just obtained by, by closing the, the group algebra in the regular presentation. And you obtain an infinity of gamma hat, gamma hat being the dual. I mean, the true dual when gamma is abelian. And the dual we're talking about the last time, non commutative space in the general case. It's also known when it's a factor, when it is R. So it's hyperfinite and gamma has infinite conjugacy classes, is amenable. But we can talk about, so for the groups, dual, it's, it's okay, this fits into this framework. For the sphere, it's a bit more complicated because we need to integrate all the spheres and some quantum groups acting there. We'll talk about that later. Now, another interesting thing that you can do as random matrices. So let's just take this von Neumann algebra as matrices, tensors, or abelian ones. So the elements inside are called random matrices. And the main discovery here due to Wigner in the 50s was that uh, the Gaussian matrices, which are taken self adjoint, follow an is big, this semicircle law. So, proved by moment method, big formula, everything you get Catalan. So, very, very interesting result. Now, on this, you can build several things, and uh, among others, pre probability. That's another uh, third interesting direction. So, you see, you can uh, have this notion of independence, right? And following Voiculescu, you can call to subalgebra as free if this is satisfied. So it's basically, I mean, this is basically for group algebras. These are independent inside the tensor product and free inside the free product. And what's very interesting is that, that we have a free central limit theorem. So this is the CLT, with the Gaussian law. And now if you take the variables free instead of independent, the rest being the same, you get exactly the Wigner semicircle law from the previous slide. So very, very interesting. So once again, we'll talk about this in the next two lectures. And finally, one last thing, which is perhaps the most important is the factors here of von Jones. So if you consider an inclusion of two factors, what Jones discovers is that somehow by taking the reflection, and again and again and again the reflection, you get a so-called Jones tower, and the reflection is obtained by enlarging the algebra with the projection, orthogonal projection. And uh, these projections generate a copy of the temporary leap algebra. So there's a lot of relations here with physics, statistical mechanics, and all that. So this was first for an introduction, very, very uh, big area. And we'll talk a bit more uh, about this in the next lectures. See you soon.